I think that we can all agree that a Magic the Gathering format can get a little bit stale when you see a lot of the same decks or a lot of the same cards in use. So that's why I've created Huggins Highlander, a format designed where you can play more cards in more decks and have more different, more fun games. Consistency can often equal strength in terms of Magic the Gathering decks. So as a whole, we seek to have a bit of a lower power than Commander. So we will seek to reduce consistency in Huggins Highlander with a larger deck size, a few to key tutors being absent from the format and more cards being unbanned. Huggins Highlander seeks to do exactly that. In short, more fun, more often. Now, Huggins Highlander is a bit of an offshoot of standard EDH, so many of the deck building rules and play rules are based off of those rules, but I'll explain to you everywhere that they differ. Just as in Commander, players start with a legendary creature as the commander for their deck. However, different from Commander, there is no color identity restrictions, meaning that you can play whichever cards of any color in any deck that you like. Now, a deck in Huggins Highlander must contain between 200 and 300 cards, including the commander. If you are playing a companion and it is not part of the deck, it does not count towards your card count. The purpose of having this larger maximum deck size and this range as a deck size is to reduce consistency and to allow people to play more fun cards. A lot of the time, I find myself doing this and I think a lot of people do as well. We start when we look at a deck list, it's way more than 100 cards. There's tons and tons of cards we want to fit in. And then we slowly cut it down and chop out, oh, it's a little jank, but it seems fun. It's, oh, it's not quite optimal until we get down to a list we've seen before. And I think that's one of the downsides of Commander. Even if with all the cards legal in Commander, the 100 cards makes it a little bit hard to see more diversity in the format. And so this might help to do that. Also having a range as the maximum and minimum deck limit allows people to get a bit more creative, try a few different more styles. They don't have to be married to the standard of how people would build decks. They can build their deck however they like. Also within deck building, players do have the option to have a 10 card sideboard. And I'll expand on that a little bit later. But first let's get into the play rules. How does playing Huggins Highlander differ from EDH or other formats? Well, to start, the biggest difference right off the bat is that the starting life total in Huggins Highlander is different than that of Commander. Player's starting life total is dependent on the total combined mana value of commanders they control in the command zone. A player's starting life total will be equal to 30 plus that total combined mana value. Let me give you a couple of examples to explain this. For example, let's say that I had Regavan, Nibble Perfer, as my commander. Regavan has mana value 1 meaning that my starting life total would be 30 plus that mana value being 31. Now let's say that you are playing Progenitus, a card with the mana value of 10, then your starting life total would be 40. And if you're playing partners or choose a background commanders, it works in a similar way. You take them, add them together, and add them to your life total. Say I'm playing Silas and Rebek. I would take Silas, which is three, Rebek, which is four, add the seven to the 30, and my starting low total will be 37. The objective behind this is to allow people to play a bit more aggressive strategies and have a bit faster games if they like, or play a bit slower games and not get punished for it in comparison to more aggressive strategies. Another key change in Huggins Highlander is the commander damage requirement. Typically in a game of commander, if you, you deal 21 combat damage but with a particular commander to a certain player, that player loses the game. However, in Huggins Highlander, we've reduced it to 20. It's a small and subtle change, but one that I do think might be somewhat healthy long term. And lastly, parts of abilities which bring other traditional cards you own from outside of the game into the game do function correctly in Huggins Highlander. You may have a sideboard of exactly 10 cards that exist to be brought into the game by one of these effects. For example, this can be an effect like Learn or Karn the Great Creator. Because this is of course like not a multi-match format, you're not playing a best of seven or whatnot, if you're not playing a card that cares about grabbing cards from outside of the game, there's no need for you to have any kind of sideboard, it does not apply to you. You can if you like, it just won't provide you any value because you can't interact with it mid game. This is to allow a bit more variance and allow people to play cards like the learn cards, which are really cool, like the lessons, which are interesting, but unfortunately just don't function in commander. It may be required as time goes on to create a ban list specifically for cards being banned in a sideboard, depending on what shenanigans people get up to. But at the moment, there is no ban list regarding sideboard cards. And speaking of that ban list, let's get into the main ban list for the format. 
format. It is a modified version of the Commander ban list, featuring many of the typical staples like the Moxin, Black Lotus, Ancestral Recall, cards like that, with a few key additions being Imperial Seal, Demonic Tutor, and Vampiric Tutor. This is to reduce overall consistency and allow for games to play out differently more often. We're also reintroducing a banned as commander list, something could be banned only as the commander rather than being banned in the main deck. So we just have a few commanders in this list at the moment. This is very subject to change. Apart from that, there's been multiple unbannings on the ban list that I'm not going to talk about, but just allow for cards that have been banned quite some time ago and likely would not cause much havoc these days to be reintroduced into the format. The fact is that a 200 card minimum singleton format with less tutors in it will often allow for cards that are more powerful on their own but now are much less reliable to be more okay to be played in the format. And this will allow for more diversity as more cards are available to players. Now, I guess it would probably be in order for us to have a little bit of a conversation about what my intention is with Huggins Highlander. I'm not really planning to try to make some big push to make have this overtake commander. Here guys, here's the new, the prime, the greatest format ever created. No, this is basically just an idea, a pitch, if you will of what I think might be a fun potential alternative or different way to play something like Commander. I think there's a good number of players who might really enjoy something like this, and I think there's also a very good number of players who would despise this with every fiber of their being. <laughs> and that's okay. You don't have to play every format. Nobody is ever going to force you to play Huggins Highlander. At the end of the day, you should play whatever matches gathering formats you think are the most fun. And if you look at what I've created for Huggins Highlander you think, that might be fun, feel free to play it. Good luck finding someone to play it with, but I welcome you to try playing it. And you can find this ban list and other details about the format in the description below this video. I'm Sam Huggins. Have yourself a very nice day.